Pat Forty joining us uh, with some very strong comments the other day in his column about <laughs> the uh, legacy of uh, Philip Fulmer. There's no reason to use the word legacy and Jeremy Pruitt in the same sentence because uh, that is not going to happen. Pat, great to have you with us. Appreciate it very much. Uh, I, I, I wish I could have watched you writing that column. Uh, if you had as much joy writing it as I did reading it, uh, we would both be very happy. Good afternoon. Uh, it wasn't a difficult one to write, that's for sure. Uh, you know, I thought that when, when you're reading 18 level one violations and you go back and look at the all of the activities at Tennessee that led up to the hiring of both Phil Fulmer as AD and Jeremy Pruitt as football coach, well, this is what they earned. And let's talk about that, Pat, because I think we're so we're all guilty. Well, maybe not you, but I am uh, of saying so what? No big deal. Different era. Uh, those are that's yesterday. But but let's talk about how we ended up uh, at ten how Tennessee ended up with Jeremy Pruitt. I mean, I only, I basically remember the end of it when Philip Fulmer chose Pruitt over Mel Tucker, a name that has been very prominent lately. But uh, that's leaving out uh, the subject of that conversation with the uh, Greg Schiano fiasco and so many other aspects. Yeah, I, I mean, this was originally, I mean, this was a populist coup at Tennessee, a fan revolt that removed John Curry, the athletic director, uh, and before that blocked his hiring of Greg Schiano. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that Greg Schiano would have been a great hire, but everybody that says he would be a terrible hire doesn't know either. Nobody knows how Greg Schiano would have done, but... His track record of going 11 and two at Rutgers is pretty similar, I think, to James Franklin going nine and four at Vanderbilt. It's pretty darn good. Uh, but then beyond that, for you know, for Curry to be pushed out when he was uh, negotiating or talking to Mike Leach, and then bring in an absolute administrative know nothing in Phil Fulmer, and for them him to hire. Uh, a, a simpleton, in my opinion, in Jeremy Pruitt. Well, I mean, this was just one bad decision that compounded another. And while it may have felt good to say we're taking back our program, we're putting a Tennessee man in charge, the Tennessee man in charge didn't know what he was doing. And that, of course, Phil Fulmer, uh, who, who's a legacy. Uh, you know, he he had a brilliant career until he got fired as a football coach. And, and this, this Pat, was a make good. It was, uh, listen, uh, we love Coach Fulmer. We're sorry it ended badly. The fact that Lane Kiffin replaced him mitigates the firing a little bit because uh, that, was a that was an equal disaster, and so was du Dooley, and so was Butch Jones. So let's bring him back and forget what happened at the end when he looked the other way on recruiting and, and let him be the man. And, and, and I, I, I fell for it. Now, it could, that could be my blood. But I, I thought he was going to resurrect the program. And did he ever, Pat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he did, sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, that's the thing. Is it, it, Look, a, a lot of people have good feelings for Phil Fulmer, and for good reason, because he was a very successful coach there. He won the last national championship Tennessee won. But that doesn't mean he's going to be a good administrator. That doesn't mean he's going to run a good coaching search. That doesn't mean he's going to make good decisions there, including – giving Jeremy Pruitt an, a raise and an extension after going 8-5 and five in a year when they lost to Georgia State. That's what p helped push his buyout up to the $12.6 million mark. I mean, I didn't see Phil Fulmer do anything well in, during his time as an athletic director. Pat, in terms of Pruitt, I don't want to lose sight of him. Uh, you, you've, you've done some you know, stellar investigative reporting in your time. Just to compare and contrast what you learned in reading this report to to what we normally see programs investigated for and 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 the and I'm not trying to turn anything into garden variety because in 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 the in the NIL world just because players are are legally receiving money doesn't mean coaches can illegally uh, break the rules which clearly the NCAA is accusing Pruitt of doing yeah, I mean, one of the misnomers here is that, well, this is all legal now. No, actually, every single thing that they're charged with in that notice of allegations is not legal. You cannot have recruits in and pay their expenses on an unofficial visit. You can't have men on during a dead period. And coaches cannot hand wads of cash to recruits or their families. Even now, even in the NIL era, those things cannot happen according to the NCAA rules. Pruitt was, I mean, usually, you know how these things go. The head coach is like three layers removed and said, I didn't know anything was happening. Well, it's kind of hard to say that when you and your wife are accused 
of literally being part of the bagman bagwoman uh, uh, group. So uh, it is incredibly sloppy. It's unbelievably brazen. Uh, yeah, the dollar figures don't jump out when we're talking now about possible NIL deals of you know in millions of dollars. But this is pure out uh, paying recruits to come to school there, and uh, it, it is <laughs> it, it, it is one of the more lengthy and I would say embarrassing notices of allegations I've seen. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.